and we'll just start freestyle like this. Here we are, and would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name's uh, David Demin. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. It is a pleasure to meet you, David. And uh, to set the context, we uh, do you want to explain Startup Ole and what brought you here to Startup Ole? So I was introduced by Emmy, the founder, uh, a couple of weeks back, and they said, you've got to come and do a talk here, so here I am. So Marbella, am I saying it right? Marbella? Marbella. Marbella, <laughs> España. Marbella, España, and hello. From here, Buenos Dias. So why don't you tell us about your projects that you're most excited about? So my little side project, I call it. So I acquired the largest Napoleonic fortress in the UK, well actually Europe, uh, from the UK government. And we bought it with the intention of building the world's most impactful innovation center focused on sustainability. And we are now going to be inviting 50 entrepreneurs around the world. We posted a video a couple of weeks back and it went viral online. I think we're on like 2 million, 2.2 million. And we got over a thousand applicants. And we are looking to help positively impact a billion lives within the next 10 years. And one of my main businesses, I got a patent on a new method of construction, which we just launched in Saudi, and we're going to be building thousands of homes um, there and also working on a number of other very exciting projects. And I'm honored and blessed to be working with some of the most phenomenal game changing entrepreneurs in the world. And I look forward to helping further evangelize entrepreneurialism. When you look at the world, what do you see as the biggest problems? You've identified building. What, what, else, what, what else do you think is top? Well, well, the biggest one I'm obviously solving at the moment is for trying to attempt is, is the housing shortages. Every country's got a big housing deficit. Saudi Arabia alone has got a 30 million housing deficit. The UK, 4.2 million. Uh, and there's going to be many other issues around energy. Uh, we've got another piece of uh, technology where we have a fully transparent window uh, that generates electricity. 14 years ago, I invested into a nanotech company producing quantum dots and nanoparticles smaller than a red blood cell. And we put it in a completely transparent window. We can generate electricity. So our homes, every square inch of our house, we develop, we want it to be producing energy. So energy and housing, that's what our two big challenges we're going to be focusing on. I love this. Uh, I, I got to insert into this that uh, Kunarka was a company that was founded using University of Massachusetts generated technology for transparent, flexible solar film. Have you heard of this? Yes, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Like, and I was wondering what happened to the company and the patents. Or is this at all related? It doesn't sound related. No, it the, the, this, the, the, the solar panels that are flexible, the, the, um, the, 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 how they can produce enough energy is not sufficient enough to make it scalable at this yeah. po particular point. Um, but there's a lot of different innovations, but the next innovation we're looking at is filing a patent on a uh, surface energy collection device, which is about 6x multiple in the current traditional solar panel. But there's loads of other fun stuff we're working on, but they're the key ones that we're going to scale at the moment. So I love what you're doing here because um, people think it's all about transportation and power generation, but actually what buildings are 30% of the climate problem? Yeah, um, and also our material is not using cement, and cement is a big CO2 emitter. We're using expanded clay and perlite, which is all organic compounds, and... No shortage of those? No shortage of that at all. all right. And anywhere on the planet, they're fairly yeah. Sh short supply I mean, chains? Yeah, I mean, 70% uh, 70, 70 of the world deposits are in Turkey, but what's interesting about um, perlite, which is only about 15 to 12.5% of our mix, is you heat it to 850 degrees and it expands to 15, 20 times the volume, creating millions of small air bubbles within that, which is a big thermal insulator. So the, the expanded clay is, a, is abundant globally and we're utilizing a product that I can't believe no one's done before. Properly. Right, so what, why do you think that nobody does these? I mean, there's so much capital in the world, so many brilliant people. Why isn't any con construction company? Well, there jumped? is, it, I, I, um, I found one of these companies in Poland and they're an absolute game changer. So we basically partnered with some of the leading engineers in the world and we basically took little bits of the best and we created a leapfrog of some other technology. So we've been working with the leaders of, of some of these companies and we've just basically found a way to scale it. I think what anybody watching this would be wanting me to ask, how do I become like you? How can, can anybody uh, develop the connections, find the ideas? You just got to stay hungry because I, uh, start, I started when I was um, very young. I started buying and selling uh, Pokemon cards I think when I was like nine years old and I'm now 49 years old. Pokemon cards? No, I'm, I'm not 49. I just go into the ice bath every morning. I feel, I think I'm for the first time in my life, I'm 33 years old, first time in my life, I think I'm actually happy with my age. I always wanted to be older when I was younger and now, yeah, I'll 30, stay like this for a bit. 33 is a good age. I'm trying to stay <laughs> that age myself. Um, okay, so you got to connect some dots though. Pokemon cards, anybody hearing that you just bought a fort will think that you were born into wealth and I can never be like you. No, I mean, I, um, I bought it with no money. Uh, my mum calls me the king of leverage. So I bought it, managed to find ways to pull out some value. Um, I spent four years of lobbying in parliament, made the right connections. 
and uh, got people to, be, you know, if people believe in you, you know, I always say all ships rise in the tide. And if you hang around four losers, you'll be the fifth. So make sure you hang around the right people because you've got to make sure you have the right support around you. Uh, and also, I'm very lucky I've got one of the best mums in the world because she's supported me through thick and thin. And it wasn't an easy journey. It looks like an overnight success and it really wasn't. <laughs> this is so interesting. Okay, so you're saying it's not inherited wealth. It's not like you were lucky. You know leverage and you know how to connect with people and sell a vision. Is yeah, that it? Yeah, that's it. And you've got to just drive, work your ass off because there's nothing in life that comes easy. If it was easy, everyone would do it. I used to be very naive and maybe I still am. I got asked to do talks in schools, universities. Yeah. And I used to say, if you want to be an entrepreneur, go and do it. But now I'd say, don't do it. Don't do it unless you're willing to sacrifice your life. You're going to lose friends. You're going to not be able to have a stable relationship. But I've done it because I really believe in where we're going and I'm, I'm going to help now with the where I am in my life. Now I want to help support other entrepreneurs. So if you've got a game changing idea, contact me, David Demin on Instagram and uh, let's go help change the world. Now, um, I, I almost want to ask here, how can I help? Uh, <laughs> I'm an academic, midlife. I, I love telling stories like yours, but more, more than that, I think like a lot of people, we'd like to get engaged without leaving our day job. What, what, what should somebody do if they don't want to leave their position? So it very much depends on sort of the goals that you want to, and, and your sort of ambitions in life. Because if you have a vision of you want to do something, you know, there's a lot of misguided advice where I say, yeah, go and do it. Actually, no, you've got to be strategic about it. Keep your day job. Make, you've got to look at the basics and you've got to be able to feed yourself. You've got to be able to look after, have you've got a roof over your head. Make sure you've got the right support around you. But then you've got to work behind the scenes while you're running in parallel, making money. And if you've got a startup, go make sure you're not launching too early, but also saying that perfect is the enemy of good. If you've launched when you think you're perfect, you've launched way too late. So you gotta fail fast and fail quickly. And it's not failure unless you learn from it. Uh, that's good. And also I think what you're building towards is you can prototype before you quit everything and dedicate yourself. Prototype and test. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, validate. just go out there. And, and we, we've just met at this amazing event yep. and just go out there and network with people that you'd be surprised. I mean, you know, people think I'm like unreachable, but you just yeah. message me on Instagram and I'll, I, if I can help, I, I will try my best to at least point you in the right direction. You'd be surprised the amount of people that are actually there willing to help and give you advice. So don't be afraid, Go ask the questions and ask the right questions. And if you don't know to, what the right questions are, ask, what is the right question to ask you? <laughs> What's the right question to ask you? Depends on what you, are, what you want to go to, but. <laughs> if, if we want this video to blow up, give you the attention that your ideas deserve, um, I think people will want to know how to reach out. You've already shared that on Instagram. You're very reachable. Um, you've already given some guidance of, of what you find exciting. Ideas that actually can, is the number, the number one problem relates to sustainability overall. It's, well, it's the first cohort that we're running through the Citadel, uh, Tech4. So Tech4 is the innovation hub. So I'm actually looking at buying, uh, in the process, I've got about seven or eight other forts around the world that we're going to be launching and buying. And there's several others we've got on the pipeline. But it's not just sustainability. Sustainability is my personal ambition and focus. But uh, next year we might be doing uh, deep tech. We'll then be looking at maybe other different sort of tech segments. Uh, we're actually looking at partnering and buying a university in the UK because we're putting a PE fund together to ensure that we actually have a university on campus as well. So it's called the Triple Helix. So we've got education, innovation, and then also the whole sort of creativity around that. So I want to sort of facilitate as many dropouts as possible and just come start working with us. Facilitate dropouts. Uh, I think I might have to take a leave of absence or a sabbatical and come to your university. Let's go. Let's do it. Yes. Yes. Uh, so many more questions. I, can you have time for one more? Yeah, let's go. Connect the dots between Pokemon card dealing and being able to buy castles. Like, well, the, it was, um, I was actually an arms dealer at one point. Um, but you, you realize some people will believe, there's some percentage of people that will believe you. No, no, I was, but I'll okay. tell you, I'll explain the story because. Legal or illegal? Uh, illegally, um, but at school. So, cut a long story short, when I was 14, I bought these cap guns at school when I was with my brothers in London, came back and brought them to school and sold um, all eight of them. And I told my friends, look, whatever you do, don't shoot them at school. Obviously, within about 50 minutes, it's like the Wild West. Everyone's shooting these cap guns around school. And then with minutes, obviously, you know, a couple of people snitched on me. Um, they pointed the finger at me. And then within like an hour, um, my parents were there, headmaster was there. And uh, they said, look, we should be expelling David right there and right then. However, we admire his entrepreneurial spirit. We think he's going to go far and we're going to just give him a detention. And then I just went to my mum. I'm like, mum, what's an entrepreneur? I had no idea what an entrepreneur was. So... Uh, yeah, so I was doing it before I even knew what it was. So, um. And to clarify for anybody who's about to uh, hate comment that, oh my God, how can we make light of and talk about semi-glamorized arms trade? These are Capcom non-lethal. 
No, right? ca cap guns, they just yeah. make a little noise. They're like, yeah. And they're yeah. about this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so anybody about to hate comment, hold on, hold well, on. Well, you do need 40% hate to go viral, so hate. Oh, oh hate, hate away. Hate away. <laughs> Please. Um, okay, so so your cap gun trading, I love this story, this is great. Okay, so come on, what's the first business that actually made money that you were able to you know, sell or get enough profit from that you're able to do the next thing? I'll let you know in 10 years. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, Are you mostly debt financed or do you get investors? No, or you it's, it's, it's a mix of everything. It just, it very much depends. So yeah. the Citadel, I, uh, I, I ended up convincing the government to buy it at a price that I ended up leveraging out. I went to the bank. As soon as I bought it, I leveraged out the next day at 6x multiple because I found some ways to untap some value. Uh, and then... Immediately? I, and the banks believe? Yeah. Because I put, I, I, I structured some leases within that, and um, I, uh, it's 54 buildings. It's the largest Napoleonic fortress, uh, 220,000 square foot of space above ground, and then about 20,000 to 50,000 of uh, space below ground that we're still discovering. And, and, and nobody put this together that you could buy it and immediately set up leases. No, no, there was there was 30 to 50 bids, but I won the bid because we could demonstrate that we could secure its long-term future, and the government wanted to support. Uh, someone like myself that could actually drive innovation and entrepreneurship. So they took a bet on me and, and just paying off, hopefully. But yeah, it's looking well. So one of our other innovations, we've got multiple innovations coming out of the Citadel, uh, which is based in Dover in, uh, in the UK, an hour from uh, London. So you're open to hearing pitches from people all over the world if they know an awesome castle that makes sense. Uh, yeah, look, if you know an old castle, and, I, and I've been, I, sent, I get sent forts and castles all the time, but it's got to be like really cool. And for me, that's why I bought this, because I wanted the theatrics of someone wanted to come and stay at this place, because it's, uh, it's, it's one of the coolest locations. The photos and videos just do not do it justice. Okay, I think I got at least one in mind. Oh, I got two now. Cool, let's, do it. Oh, let's leverage it out. Oh my, I don't want to <laughs> share my idea with the world yet, because... Uh, let's, uh, let's share the next video perfect. when we buy it. Perfect, perfect. You're here uh, all through tomorrow as well? Yeah, I'm here till Sunday. Okay, so to give a plug to uh, the people putting this together, thank you, Startup Ole in Marbella, España. Uh, any last thing that you want to say to generate some hate comments? Give me a shout. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, we might do another one. Another one of these. Another one. Of video. These? Yeah. Well, another video. No, oh, yeah, later on. Later yeah, on. Why not? If, we Let's do of, it. if we think of anything else brilliant to say, stay tuned. All right. Bye. Well,